Hijra is a term given to eunuchs, intersex people, and transgender people in the Indian subcontinent. Also known as Aravani, Aruvani, Jagapa, or Chaka, the transgender community in India prefer to call themselves Kinnar or Kinnar, referring to the mythological beings that excel at song and dance. Hiras are officially recognized as third gender in countries in the Indian subcontinent, being considered neither completely male nor female. Hiras have a recorded history in the Indian subcontinent from antiquity onwards as suggested by the Kama Sutra period. Many Hiras live in well-defined and organized all-Hijra communities, led by a guru. These communities have consisted over generations of those who are in abject poverty, rejected by, or flee, their family of origin. Many work as sex workers for survival. The word, Hijra, is a Hindustani word. It has traditionally been translated into English as eunuch or hermaphrodite, where the irregularity of the male genitalia is central to the definition. However, in general, Hiras are born male, only a few having been born with intersex variations. Some hiras undergo an initiation rite into the hijra community called nirwan, which refers to the removal of the penis, scrotum, and testicles. Since the late 20th century, some hijra activists and non government organizations NGOs have lobbied for official recognition of the hijra as a kind of third sex or third gender, as neither man nor woman. Hiras have successfully gained this recognition in Bangladesh and are eligible for priority in education. In India, the Supreme Court in April 2014 recognized hijra and transgender, eunuchs, intersex people as a third gender in law. Nepal, Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh have all legally accepted the existence of a third gender, with India and Nepal including an option for them on passports and certain official documents. Terminology. <inaudible> 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 The Hindustani word hijra may alternately be romanized as hijra, hijda, ihada, hajara, hijra and is pronounced Hindustani pronunciation, da. This term is generally considered derogatory in Urdu and the word kwaja sara is used instead. Another such term is kaja, kashua or kusara. kusara. In Bengali, hijra is called hajara, hijra, hijla, hijra, hizra, or hizare. A number of terms across the culturally and linguistically diverse Indian subcontinent represent similar sex or gender categories. While these are rough synonyms, they may be better understood as separate identities due to regional cultural differences. In Odia, a hijra is referred to as hinjada, hinjda or napansaka, in Telugu as napansakudu, napansakudu koja, koja or mada, mada in Tamil as thiru nangai Mr. Woman, Ali, Aravani, Aravani or Aruvani, in Punjabi as kusra or janka, in Kannada as mangalamuki, mangalamuki or chaka, kaka in Sindhi as kadra, and in Gujarati as pavaya. In North India, the goddess Bahachara Mata is worshipped by pavaya. In South India, the goddess Ranuka is believed to have the power to change one's sex. Male devotees in female clothing are known as Jogapa. They perform similar roles to hijra, such as dancing and singing at birth ceremonies and weddings. The word kathi or koti is common across India, similar to the kathoi of Thailand, although kathis are often distinguished from hiras. Kathis are regarded as feminine men or boys who take a feminine role in sex with men, but do not live in the kind of intentional communities that hiras usually live in. Additionally, not all kathis have undergone initiation rites or the body modification steps to become a hijra. Local equivalents include Durrani Kolkata, Manaka Cochin, Medi Nepal, and Zanana Pakistan. Hijra used to be translated in English as eunuch or hermaphrodite. Although LGBT historians or human rights activists have sought to include them as being transgender. In a series of meetings convened between October 2013 and January 2014 by the Transgender Experts Committee of India's Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Hijra and other trans activists asked that the term, eunuch, be discontinued from usage in government documents, as it is not a term with which the communities identify. Gender and sexuality 
These identities have no exact match in the modern Western taxonomy of gender and sexual orientation, and challenge Western ideas of sex and gender. In India, some hiras do not define themselves by specific sexual orientation, but rather by renouncing sexuality altogether. Sexual energy is transformed into sacred powers. However, these notions can come in conflict with the practical, which is that hiras are often employed as prostitutes. Furthermore, in India, a feminine male who takes a receptive role in sex with a man will often identify as a kathi or the local equivalent term while kathis are usually distinguished from hiras as a separate gender identity they often dress as women and act in a feminine manner in public spaces even using feminine language to refer to themselves and each other the usual partners of hiras and kathis are men who consider themselves heterosexual as they are the ones who penetrate these male partners are often married and any relationships or sex with Kathis, or hiras are usually kept secret from the community at large. Some hiras may form relationships with men and even marry, although their marriage is not usually recognized by law or religion. Hiras and kathis often have a name for these masculine sexual or romantic partners, for example, Panthi in Bangladesh, Guria in Delhi or Sridhar in Cochin. Social status and economic circumstances Most hiras live at the margins of society with very low status. The very word, hijra, is sometimes used in a derogatory manner. The Indian lawyer and author Rajesh Talwar has written a book highlighting the human rights abuses suffered by the community titled The Third Sex and Human Rights. Few employment opportunities are available to hiras. Many get their income from extortion forced payment by disrupting work, life using demonstrations and interference, performing at ceremonies toli, begging dingna, or sex work rarha, an occupation of eunuchs also recorded in pre-modern times. Violence against hiras, especially hijra sex workers, is often brutal, and occurs in public spaces, police stations, prisons, and their homes. As with transgender people in most of the world, they face extreme discrimination in health, housing, education, employment, immigration, law, and any bureaucracy that is unable to place them into male or female gender categories. In 2008, HIV prevalence was 27.6% amongst hijra sex workers in Larkana, Pakistan. The general prevalence of HIV among the adult Pakistani population is estimated at 0.1%. In October 2013, Pakistani Christians and Muslims, Shia and Sunni, put pressure on the landlords of Amamiya colony to evict any transgender residents. Generally in Pakistan, Khwaja Sira are not under threat, but they are in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province because of a new Islam underway. I. A. Rahman, the director of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, in a study of Bangladeshi hiras, participants reported not being allowed to seek health care at the private chambers of doctors, and experiencing abuse if they go to government hospitals. Beginning in 2006, hiras were engaged to accompany Patna city revenue officials to collect unpaid taxes, receiving a 4% commission. Since India's Supreme Court re criminalized homosexual sex on 13 December 2013, there has been a sharp increase in the physical physical, psychological and sexual violence against the transgender community by the Indian police service, nor are they investigating even when sexual assault against them is reported. On 15 April 2014, in National Legal Services Authority v. Union of India, the Supreme Court of India ruled that transgender people should be treated as a third category of gender or as a socially and economically backward. Class entitled to proportional access and representation in education and jobs. On 6 September 2018, the Supreme Court overturned India's Section 377, which criminalized anal sex and oral sex. Language The Hijra community developed a secret language known as Hijra Farsi. The language has a sentence structure loosely based on Hindustani and a unique vocabulary of at least a thousand words. Beyond the Urdu-Hindi speaking areas of subcontinent the vocabulary is still used by the Hijra community within their own native languages. In politics on the Indian subcontinent The governments of both India 1994 and Pakistan 2009 have recognized hiras as a 
third sex, thus granting them the basic civil rights of every citizen. In India, hiras now have the option to identify as a eunuch e on passports and on certain government documents. They are not, however, fully accommodated. In order to vote, for example, citizens must identify as either male or female. There is also further discrimination from the government. In the 2009 general election, India's election committee denied three hiras candidature unless they identified themselves as either male or female. In 2013, transgender people in Pakistan were given their first opportunity to stand for election. Sanam Fakir, a 32 year old Hijra, ran as an independent candidate for Sukkar, Pakistan's general election in May. In April 2014, Justice K. S. Radhakrishnan declared transgender to be the third gender in Indian law, in a case brought by the National Legal Services Authority against Union of India and others. The ruling said, Seldom, our society realizes or cares to realize the trauma, agony and pain which the members of transgender community undergo, nor appreciates the innate feelings of the members of the transgender community, especially of those whose mind and body disown their biological sex. Our society often ridicules and abuses the transgender community and in public places like railway stations, bus stands, schools, workplaces, malls, theaters, Hospitals, they are sidelined and treated as untouchables, forgetting the fact that the moral failure lies in the society's unwillingness to contain or embrace different gender identities and expressions, a mindset which we have to change. Justice Radhakrishnan said that transgender people should be treated consistently with other minorities under the law, enabling them to access jobs, healthcare, and education. He framed the issue as one of human rights, saying that these TGs, even Though insignificant in numbers, are still human beings and therefore they have every right to enjoy their human rights, concluding by declaring that Hiras, eunuchs, apart from binary gender, be treated as third gender for the purpose of safeguarding their rights under Part 3 of our Constitution and the laws made by the Parliament and the State Legislature. Transgender persons' right to decide their self-identified gender is also upheld and the center and state governments are directed to grant legal recognition of their gender identity such as male, female or as third gender. A bill supported by all political parties was tabled in Indian Parliament to ensure transgender people get benefits akin reserved communities like SC, STs and is taking steps to see that they get enrollment in schools and jobs in government besides protection from sexual harassment. Topic. History The ancient Kama Sutra mentions the performance of fellatio by feminine people of a third sex This passage has been variously interpreted as referring to men who desired other men, so-called eunuchs, those disguised as males, and those that are disguised as females. Male and female trans people. The male takes on the appearance of a female and the female takes on the appearance of the male are two kinds of biological males, one dressed as a woman, the other as a man. Franciscan travelers in the 1650s noted the presence of men and boys who dress like women, roaming the streets of Thatta, in modern Pakistan. The presence of these individuals was taken to be a sign of the city's depravity. During the era of the British Raj, authorities attempted to eradicate hiras, whom they saw as a breach of public decency. Anti-hijra laws were repealed, but a law outlawing castration, a central part of the hijra community, was left intact, though rarely enforced. Also during British rule in India they were placed under the Criminal Tribes Act 1871 and labelled a criminal tribe, hence subjected to compulsory registration, strict monitoring and stigmatised for a long time, after independence however they were denotified in 1952, though the centuries-old stigma continues. In religion Many practice a form of syncretism that draws on multiple religions, seeing themselves to be neither men nor women. Hiras practice rituals for both men and women. Hiras belong to a special caste. They are usually devotees of the mother goddess Bahachara Mata, Lord Shiva, or both. Bahachara Mata Bahachara Mata is a Hindu goddess with two unrelated stories both associated with transgender behavior. 
One story is that she appeared in the avatar of a princess who castrated her husband because he would run in the woods and act like a woman rather than have sex with her. Another story is that a man tried to rape her, so she cursed him with impotence. When the man begged her forgiveness to have the curse removed, she relented only after he agreed to run in the woods and act like a woman. The primary temple to this goddess is located in Gujarat and it is a place of pilgrimage for Hiras, who see Bahachara Mata as a patroness. <laughs> Lord Shiva One of the forms of Lord Shiva is emerging with Parvati where together they are Ardhanari, a god that is half Shiva and half Parvati. Ardhanari has special significance as a patron of Hiras, who identify with the gender ambiguity. In the Ramayana In some versions of the Ramayana, when Rama leaves Ayodhya for his 14-year exile, a crowd of his subjects follow him into the forest because of their devotion to him. Soon Rama notices this, and gathers them to tell them not to mourn, and that all the men and women of his kingdom should return to their places in Ayodhya. Rama then leaves and has adventures for 14 years. When he returns to Ayodhya, he finds that the Hiras, being neither men nor women, have not moved from the place where he gave his speech. Impressed with their devotion, Rama grants Hiras the boon to confer blessings on people during auspicious inaugural occasions like childbirth and weddings. This boon is the origin of Bada in which Hiras sing, dance, and give blessings. In the Mahabharata Mahabharata includes an episode in which Arjuna, a hero of the epic, is sent into an exile. There he assumes an identity of a eunuch transvestite and performs rituals during weddings and childbirths that are now performed by Hiras. In the Mahabharata, before the Kurukshetra War, Iravan offers his lifeblood to goddess Kali to ensure the victory of the Pandavas, and Kali agrees to grant him power. On the night before the battle, Iravan expresses a desire to get married before he dies. No woman was willing to marry a man doomed to die in a few hours, so Arjuna as Brihanala marries him. In South India, Hiras claim Iravan as their progenitor and call themselves Aravanis. Each year in Tamil Nadu, during April and May, Hiras celebrate an 18-day religious festival. The Aravani temple is located in the village Kuvagam in the Ulanderpet Talak in Villapuram district, and is devoted to the deity Kuthandavar, who is identified with Aravan. During the festival, the Aravanis reenact a story of the wedding of Lord Krishna and Lord Aravan, followed by Aravan's subsequent sacrifice. They then mourn Aravan's death through ritualistic dances and by breaking their bangles. An annual beauty pageant is also held, as well as various health and HIV or AIDS seminars. Hiras from all over the country travel to this festival. A personal experience of the Hiras in this festival is shown in the BBC3 documentary India's Ladyboys and also in the National Geographic Channel television series Taboo. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> In Islam There is evidence that Indian Hiras identifying as Muslim also incorporate aspects of Hinduism. Still, despite this syncretism, Reddy 2010 notes that a Hijra does not practice Islam differently from other Muslims and argues that their syncretism does not make them any less Muslim. Reddy 2003 also documents an example of how this syncretism manifests. In Hyderabad, India, a group of Muslim converts were circumcised, something seen as the quintessential marker of male Muslim identity. In films and literature Topic India Hiras have been portrayed on screen in Indian cinema since its inception, historically as comic relief. A notable turning point occurred in 1974 when real Hiras appeared during a song and dance sequence in Kunwara Baap The Unmarried Father. There are also Hiras in the Hindi movie Amar Akbar Anthony 1977 who accompany one of the heroes, Akbar Rishi Kapoor, in a song entitled Tayab Ali Pyar Ka Doshman Tayab Ali, the enemy of love. One of the first sympathetic hijra portrayals was in Mani Ratnam's Bombay 1995, 1997's Tamana starred male actor Paresh Rawal in a central role as Tiku, a hijra who raises a young orphan. 
Pooja Bhatt produced and also starred in the movie, with her father Mahesh Bhatt co-writing and directing. Deepa Mehta's Water features the Hijra character Galabi played by Raghavir Yadav, who has taken to introducing the downtrodden, outcast widows of Varanasi to prostitution. Not surprisingly, perhaps, the film generated much controversy. There is a brief appearance of Hiras in the 2004 Gurinder Chadha film Bride and Prejudice, singing to a bride to be in the marketplace. The 1997 Hindi film Dharmayan, in between directed and co-written by Kalpana Lajmi is based on the subject of Hijra, wherein a fictitious story of an actress bearing a son that turns out to be neuter. In the 2000 Tamil film APPU directed by Vasanth, a remake of the Hindi film Sadak, the antagonist is a brothel owning Hijra played by Prakash Raj. In Sadak, the brothel owning character was played by Sadashiv Amarpurkar under the name Maharani. Jagwa, a 2009 Marathi film, depicts the story of a man forced to be Hijra under certain circumstances. The movie has received several accolades. In Sorma Bhopali, Jagdeep encounters a troop of Hijra on his arrival in Bombay. The leader of this pack is also played by Jagdeep himself. In Anil Kapoor's Nayak, Johnny Lever, who plays the role of the hero's assistant, gets beaten up by Hiras. When he is caught calling them Hijra, he is in habit of calling almost everyone who bothers him by this pejorative and no one cares much, except this once ironically, as the addressees are literally what he is calling them. One of the main characters in Kushwant Singh's novel Delhi, Bhagmati is a Hijra. She makes a living as a semi-prostitute and is wanted in the diplomatic circles of the city. Vijay TV's Apataku Rose, a Tamil show conducted by postgraduate educated transgender woman Rose is a very successfully running program that discusses various issues faced by youth in Tamil Nadu, where she also gives her own experiences. In addition to numerous other themes, the 2008 movie Welcome to Sajanpur by Shyam Benegal explores the role of Hiras in Indian society. In the Malayalam movie Ardhanari, released on 23 November 2012, director Santhosh Soparnika tries to depict the life of a transgender person. Manoj K. Jayan, Thilakan, Sukumari and Manayanpilla Raju perform leading roles. Tamil Vadamali by novelist Su, Samutharam is the first Tamil novel about the Aravani community in Tamil Nadu, published in 1994. Transgender activist A. Ravathi became the first Hijra to write about transgender issues and gender politics in Tamil. Her works have been translated in more than eight languages and act as a primary resources on gender studies in Asia. Her book is part of research project for more than 100 universities. She is the author of Unarvam Uruvamam Feelings of the Entire Body, the first of its kind in English from a member of the Hijra community. She acted and directed stage plays on gender and sexuality issues in Tamil and Kannada. The Truth About Me, a Hijra life story is part of the syllabus for final year students of the American College in Madurai. Non Saravanan Allah 2007 and Vidya's I Am Vidya 2008 became the first trans woman autobiography. Topic. Pakistan The 1992 film Immaculate Conception by Jamil Diwali is based upon the culture clash between a Western Jewish couple seeking fertility at a Karachi shrine known to be blessed by a Sufi fakir called Gulab Shah and the group of Pakistani eunuchs who guard it. Murad, which means desire, the English title was Eunuch's Motherhood, was an award-winning biographical telefilm drama made by Evergreen Media Europe for Pakistan's television channel Indus TV that aired in 2003. The cast had the country's top male television actors playing Hiras, Suhil Ashgar, Nabil, Kazi Wajid, Cameron Jelani. It was directed by Cameron Qureshi, written by Zafar Maraj and produced by Aram Qureshi. It won both Best Telefilm and Best Director Awards at 2003 Indus Telefilm Festival. The story revolves around Saima, a trans woman, who adopts a helpless child, Murad, and her relationship with him against the backdrop of her struggling throughout her life and her desire for her son. She has sent him away to live at a hostel so she can earn a living as a dancer. After her son gets cross with her, due to teasing verbal and sexual they face while dancing. This was the first time that influential male actors came out to support Hijra, writes during interviews, noting that in Pakistani English at that time eunuch was the term to describe a transgender person, and 
Kwaja Sera also Kwaja Sera had not yet replaced what is now considered a derogatory term due to decades of heckling and name calling. Hijra. In 2004, Cameron Qureshi directed a trans drama, Morat. Effigy. However, the English title was Eunuch's Wedding. It was produced by famous actor and producer Humayun Saeed and Abdullah Kadwani with more than a dozen star studded cast members for a 33 episode series. It was nominated for Best Drama Serial, Abid Ali for Best Actor, and Maria Wasti for Best Actress at the Lux Style Awards 2005. The show was credited for making people understand the pain and abuse that Kwaja Sera Hijra constantly endure when people make fun of the way they look or dress without knowing them or how they were naturally born this way. The story involves a young lady who is arranged to marry. It turns out her husband is transgender. The story unfolds trans community in their deprived and isolated world. It portrays eloquently how they, too, are not far away from the human emotions and feelings and their world not much different from the heterosexual community. Even though they are in plain sight, they are taboo subjects and are not taken seriously. This makes them suffer endlessly in silence wrapped in slurs. The 33-episode series therefore touches on transgender abuse, women abuse, poverty, immorality of arranged marriages and child abuse. Bol Urdu, Bol meaning speak, is a 2011 Urdu language social drama Pakistani film. It concerns a patriarch, Hakim, who is a misogynist, a domestic abuser, a bigot and a zealot who forces religion on his family. They face financial difficulties due to Hakim wanting a son. He rejects his transgender daughter, Safi, as he wanted an heir and she identifies as a girl. Safi is deeply loved by the rest of her family. As she grows up, men want to take advantage of her and she does not understand at first. However, her oldest sister intervenes and teaches Safi about what kind of touching is inappropriate. As Safi grows older, she is not allowed to leave the house. She finds her sister's dresses compelling and tries them on, revealing her gender identity. A neighbor played by famous South Asian singer Adif Aslam, who is in love with one of the sisters, gets Safi a job at a place where they paint trucks, with the blessing of Safi's sisters and mother. Safi dresses like a boy, however, other boys sense her lack of self-esteem and eventually gang rape her. She is saved when another transgender person, played by Almas Bobby, a transgender actor, finds her and takes her home. Hakim overhears Safi telling her mother and Zainab what happened. When everybody is asleep, Hakim locks the room and suffocates his child for luring the men for the shame he would have to bear if the story got out. It received several positive reviews from critics and went on to win the Best Hindi Film Award in IRDS Film Awards 2011 by Institute for Research and Documentation in Social Sciences IRDS. Topic: Outside the Indian Subcontinent In the graphic novel Habibi by Craig Thompson, the protagonist, Zam, is adopted by a group of hiras. In the TV comedy Outsourced 2011, a hijra is hired by Charlie as a stripper for Rajiv's bachelor party, much to Rajiv's utter horror. The novel The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy features a storyline involving a hijra character named Anyam. Documentaries Ladyboys 1992 Middle Sexes HBO documentary includes segment on modern hijda 2005 Shabnam Mousy 2005 Topic See also Gali the Eunuch priests of the Phrygian goddess Cybele in antiquity Gender identities in Thailand Kathoi, a distinct transgender group. Homosexuality in India LGBT rights in Pakistan List of transgender-related topics Mux, a Zapotec transgender female Mexico. Nullo Transgender rights in Tamil Nadu Transvestism Two-spirit